Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to the second video. So in the first one, what we did was we looked at some of the primary widgets that you'll be using in a Flutter application. Um, so this was geared, um, this series is geared towards um, React developers, but even if you're not a React developer, you're still able to essentially grab the bull by the horns and really go with um, the examples that I demonstrated. So in this second one, we'll be taking this a bit further. We'll be looking at the stack widget. We'll be looking at the positioned widgets and um, several other widgets. So like, for example, how do you render an image in a Flutter application? So Flutter is heavily inspired by React. So it's got lifecycle methods as well. It's got the use of the st set state function, um, which we you would use to um, trigger updates to your UI. So I'm not going to delay any further. Let's get into it. The stack widget allows you to align items on the Z axis. So let's add a stack widget as such. And this also takes in a children named argument. We'll provide a list. I'll create a container widget with a height and a width. And I will give this container a decoration. And here we'll specify a box decoration. So this, for instance, allows us to do certain things like adding a color. And let's use indigo. And let me run this. Okay, so it looks like that. And then secondly, I can specify, for instance, a text widget. And then here I'll say flutter rocks. Let's specify a style and let's run this. Okay, okay, I made it a bit too big. All right, so what stack does is it's overlaying each widget on top of the other. So if I, for instance, add another container here, set the width to 100, set the height to 100, specify a decoration we'll give it an orange color and we will specify a border radius and here we want a circular border radius and in here we'll specify 50. so let me run this and now you can see the orange circle is overlaid on top of the other two if we want to move things about we can for instance we have a padding widget we can use so padding takes in a padding property and if you want to specify the padding to use, we'll use edge insets. So we can either add padding on all sides or we can add padding on specific sides. So let's say only. And in here now, I'll, I'll give you a left padding of 30 and I'll give a top padding of 40, for instance. And padding also takes in a child. So here I'll specify this text as the child for this padding widget. So let's run this. And now it's shifted a bit. Also with this container, if you want to position it absolutely, you can use a positioned widget. So let me familiarize myself with the API. So you select that open documentation and then you can use any of these properties. So you can specify a left, a top, double right, where right, a bottom, width, height, and a child. Okay, so for child, we'll pass in this container and let's specify a left let's say minus 60 can we do that i'm assuming we can let's run this okay and now i've shifted it left wise so the reason why it's getting hidden here is by default it, it inherits the width and the height of the first item in the collection so this is equivalent to setting overflow hidden so we can specify an overflow and we'll say overflow visible and then i'll run this and yeah, you can see the overflow is visible. Let's shift it a bit more to the left. And then, yeah, let's make this 20. So on and so forth. So at least you get a gist. And of course, states still gets updated as such. I will add a sized box. And this allows us to add spacing between our widgets. So in here, we can specify a height. And let's say 30. So that should add space in between these two. And also we'll add, we'll copy that and we'll paste that here. And that should add space in between these two. So let's run it. And there we go. So this is what we should have right now. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to demonstrate. So you know I said the reason why we declare stateful widgets is to take in configuration information. So that means that this configuration information can be passed to our widgets being rendered. So the way you do that is I specified, I've got a named parameter here, title. So let's specify our title here and I'll just call it Flutter Demo. 
which means that now we're able to reference this title in our widget tree. So here I use widget.title. So widget returns an instance of our stateful widget class. So let me run it. Yeah, still does. So this is our app bar, it still shows Flutter demo. I can also copy that and place that in here. So that should also say Flutter demo. And there we go, Flutter demo. All right, so we've got a good amount of widgets being rendered onto the screen. But as you can see, because of the declarative nature of instantiating your widgets, you could find yourself in um, what's known as a callback hell. So let's refactor some of this logic into a widget of its own so that we can modularize this widget tree a bit more. For this example, I will use the row. So let's cut this row out of there. We'll create a widget, square rows, which will extend a stateless widget. And in here, we're going to override the build function. And in this build function, we will return our row widget. Next, we need to pass in this main axis alignment. And the way we do that is we'll declare a constructor called square rows. This constructor will take in a main axis alignment and then I'll create an instance property of the same name. And let's remove this underscore. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can come back over here and then we'll instantiate our square rows widget. We need to specify we need to specify the main axis alignment and this will be our, our state property. And let's close that off. So let's run this again and it should still behave the same way. All right, cool. I want us to revisit the way we're instantiating these two state properties. So normally the way you do that in a Flutter application is through the init state lifecycle method. So you will not do it immediately you would assign a default value when the init state method runs. So that's the first lifecycle method that gets invoked. So let's define that. I'll come down over here and we need to override init state. And in here, we will instantiate these two. So I'll copy that, I'll paste that here. I'll get rid of type definition for that, which means that now we can come over here and delete these two. And the last thing we need to do is we need to invoke the init state function in the parent class. So that should now disappear. Cool. So let's run this and it should still behave the same way. Yep, that's perfect. All right. So the next item to look at is how we render images. Fortunately, Flutter provides us an image widget. And to render an image, we'll come over here and for our container, we are going to specify a child and this child will be our image. And if you hit a period, you get a list of different types of images to load. So images from your assets. So if you're building an Android iOS app, you may have an assets directory with images like, let's say your app logos and whatnot. You can load from there. You can load an image from the file system, from memory, from the network. So for us, we want to load an image from the network. We can see the documentation for that. So this takes in a string with the location of the image. So I'll pass in that. And also we can specify a width and a height for that image and whatnot. So let's try and do that. And let's run this. And there we go. The container has been given a box decoration that has a border radius. So it's actually a circle, but you can see that the image is not clipped to that circle. So there are various ways of achieving that, but then the easier way is to use a circle avatar widget. So let's comment this out and we'll specify child again and we'll instantiate a circle avatar widget. This avatar widget takes in a background image and here we pass in an image from the network. So this also takes in a string with the location of our image. So. Let's try and render another image. We get an image in a circle. And let's look at the docs. We won't specify a width and a height, but we can specify a radius. So let's say for here, if we 
specify a radius for this image uh, let's say 40 and if i run this not much happens let's try 20 and the reason why not much is happening is because this circle avatar inherits the dimensions of this container so behind the scenes you'll set the radius to whatever value you need to populate the parent widget so which in this case is container so if we were to for instance have this in a center widget yeah it should now be taking our radius so let's set our radius to say 40 yeah that looks about right actually let's make it 45 let us change the box color to let's give it a much more transparent black so it's a see-through black and yep it should look like that okay that's looking good so so far we've been using the center widget to align whatever we place inside it um, dead on center i guess the question arises that what if let's say we want to align it to the bottom right or like the top left so in that instance flutter gives us the align widget and this align widget allows us to align as the name suggests whatever we place inside it in a defined area of its parent widget align takes in an alignment option and we can say alignment dot let's say bottom center and let's run that so that's now placed at the bottom center of course we can say bottom right and that should appear at the bottom right let's make this smaller so it's much more clearer yeah so something like that and of course we can also use alignment to place this in the center and let's bring this back to 45 all right circle avatar can also take in a child widget so in this case we can we can render a centered text and let's give it some styling why to do and yep there we go let's also move this subtree into its own stateless widget i'll call it positioned circle avatar which extends stateless widget and as usual we'll override the build method and then we'll return this widget tree and let's change that into a semicolon and then i can copy that and place that here so if i run yeah everything should still look the same the behavior shouldn't change all right okay i think that's about it for this tutorial if you enjoyed what's being presented do hit that like button i'd really appreciate it if you're not a subscriber hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any updates so this will be the last video in the overview series for react developers i'll be doing more flutter videos and i will see you in the next video thank you